Hey everybody, it's Dave, Blue Jacket 66 here for another video. Here with uh, one of my Frenchies, Axel. There's Rudy over there. Diesel's upstairs uh, in bed. So I want to do an end of the year uh, best pickup video along with uh, that I'd mix it up and uh, give my top five pickups for this year, at least the ones that I enjoy. It's not based on value, uh, but also uh, top five misses and top five or at least five uh, wants for 2024. I think uh, 2023 was a, a really good year for me. Again, I am at the uh, place in my collecting where I'm not collecting mass amounts. I want to downsize. I would guess that my total pickups for this year were probably less than 25 uh, cards. I'm really, I didn't downsize at all, I didn't sell anything. Although I think over the next couple of years, I'll, I'll be selling a little bit. I'm seriously thinking about selling my 1949 Bowman set, which is a master set. Um, I don't know, I'm thinking about put it in an REA, I'm not sure. But um, right now I'm really kind of the point of accumulating uh, end of my collecting career cards, dream cards and whatnot. I've, I've collected all the, I've been collecting so long that I have collected what I've wanted and sold a lot of them, they've come and gone. But no longer am I really interested in, in kind of mainstream cards. I, I just want the cards that I've always wanted, and I may get them, and I may not. So as far as the top five of 2023, these are not top five um, in value. They're just top five that perhaps put a smile on my face I really enjoy a lot. Um, I may be referring to a little bit of notes here because I just have them. I do not have these cards in front of me. I'm gonna show uh, pictures uh, of the cards. These are all cards that I do own and cards that I have owned. And um, of the misses, they will be cards as the ones that I was actually seriously trying to bid on. And uh, uh, just some examples of, of cards for 2024 that I'm kind of targeting. I don't, I'm not a really a big, hey, I gotta get this card in this year, but ones that I'd, I would like to get. Doesn't necessarily I'm gonna mean to get them. Probably, I'm not sure if any of the cards that I'm gonna show that I picked up this year were on my list of uh, uh, must have or targeting for this year, except for perhaps one. So the first, uh, really thrilled to have this one. This is the 1947 Bond bred Jackie Robinson. Um, it was in an SGC seven. It is just a big thrill card for me. Uh, it's certainly in the conversation a rookie card. I think along with his 47 Bond bred portrait, the small white one, the set of 13, that was kind of a promo card, along with the uh, 49 Leaf and the uh, 49 uh, Bowman. But uh, this was really a big thrill for me to get this one can't remember the auction I got at, but if you look at my video this year, if you look back at my videos this year, I talk about the pickup, I talk about the 1947 Bond bread card in some detail, uh, because I think the Bond bread issue is interesting. We don't want to uh, mix up the Bond bread with those beveled corners with the uh, uh, the vending, the square corner ones that were found in vending machines and in the sports card subjects um, boxes. And they're certainly easily differentiated from the, the perforated dual sided ones that are, these are all called bond bread and they are not bond bread. What is bond bread is the beveled corner ones uh, with the light backs uh, that were in 47. These others were not in 1947. If you really want to learn about bond bread cards, uh, you can watch my video, but the, what I would do is I would Google uh, 1947 Bond Bread and its imposters, and then hyphen Net 54 Baseball or Net 54. A huge thread out on a Net 54 Baseball. Everything you want to know about uh, Bond Bread. A lot of conversation there, a huge amount of knowledge. Uh, really cool. So that was number five of my pickups. My number four pickup was a pickup at the National, my T206. 
uh, Walter Johnson. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a great picture of this card, so I kind of Frankensteined. Uh, it's this is not good, but uh, that's there. It is. It's it's just a beautiful T two hundred six Walter Johnson. I picked it up. I'm not sure what day at the National. I think perhaps the Friday. I tend not to buy a lot right off. And what I do not do going to the National, I never go targeting a card. I think that's a bad strategy. I think you, if you're targeting a card, you want a card, you probably you may get it, but it's perhaps it's not the one you want. And many of the cards there you can get any time during the year, an entire option auction. So I never target a card. Uh, most of my, a lot of times I'll come away from the National with nothing, uh, but uh, many times when I get something, it's something I've just stumbled upon or seen and uh, had to have. Um, but I never target anything at the National. But that's number four was my T206 uh, Walter Johnson. Uh, number three, the 19, this is awesome, the 1933 Warsh Cigar uh, Babe Ruth that I got at Golden Auction, and you can watch that video. I think it's titled something like uh, Why I Trust REA and Do Not Trust Golden Auction. I want to watch that video uh, with a little uh, commentary uh, in there about uh, this particular card. It is in a PSA 3, and the reason it's a 3 is there's like a tiny micro uh, wrinkle up by the edge, but it's just a just very rare card, super rare. This war cigars are awesome, uh, and they bear the same Conlon uh, image as uh, his 1929 Cation and his 1930 W554. Both all awesome cards. I think the Warsh is the nicest by far because it's almost a photograph appearing card. Uh, I like the W554 next, and the Cation is cool as well. Uh, I gave one, I think I had a Cation Ruth, but I, I gave it away uh, in one of my contests or something like that. It was in very poor condition, but uh, the Cation uh, Ruth has uh, really increased in price. Several years ago, they were just not expensive at all. They've gone up, but I still think it's a beautiful image Ruth and something uh, worth your while looking at if you're looking to get into a Ruth card. You can get a very low grade because they're on such fine paper. They tend to have little micro wrinkles in them. They're barely perceptible creases, and they'll get a 1 or 1.5, and they look absolutely beautiful. That was my number three. And my number two was uh, this uh, 1910 Eon Mathewson. Um, it's the only one on the face of the earth. Um, it, they were, it was on a box of cards. Uh, they are rarely, rarely found uh, as cutouts. I do have the cutout one, not this one here that I'm showing here. The one I, They come in blue or red. I have the red. Uh, and sometimes you can see them with the, that diamond base path cut out. But this is like the full panel with the balls. Uh, I saw that. It was being um, auctioned by Huggins and Scott. And I don't know if you know Matheson, and I don't know if you know these E-Yunk cards, but to have this was it's like a monster, monster thrill of mine. Uh, it's one of the prides of my collection, and it's by no means one of the most expensive. It's pretty expensive, but just absolutely thrilled to pick that up in Huggins uh, and Scott. But my number one pickup uh, is my 1950 uh, Cracker Jack Joe Jackson. You can find that video that is uh, titled uh, Why I Restored an, uh, an Iconic uh, Vintage Baseball Card. Um, and. That is one of my favorite videos I've ever made, and I think it's one of the best base, vintage baseball card videos on YouTube. I know that's me. Why am I saying that? I honestly think that. I love that video, and I love this card. Uh, the story is that I had it years ago. It was torn in half. It was restored in the collection. It was my dad's. I ultimately had to sell it, and years later, I came back upon it, and I acquired it this year, and it is one of the big highlights of my collection. So those are kind of my top five favorites. Uh, I had some private acquisitions and uh, I have some other acquisitions that I've never showed, that I haven't showed on YouTube that I don't want to be part of this. I just wanted this kind of my top five favorite cards and ones that I've previously shown on YouTube. So 
that's them. Now, what about my misses uh, for uh, 2023? Number five, uh, 1927 York Caramel Babe Ruth. I think this was in a Leland's auction. I've only ever really bid in Leland just on occasion. Uh, typically, they have more rings and trophies and not so much cards. It's more memorabilia stuff. But I happened to see this. Uh, I bid on it. And all these misses, I bid on aggressively trying to win them. But I gave up on this one. I wanted this one because of uh, that. Uh, there's two York Caramels um, uh, cards. It doesn't matter to me the type. But that's the same pose. It's in my Harrington ice cream my Yingling's ice cream, and my Tharp's ice cream uh, card. Uh, so I wanted to get all cards that have this pose for him. The other one would be the Sweetman's ice cream. Uh, I've done a video on Sweetman's ice cream cards, that, and I think I made a pretty good case that Sweetman's is actually a confectionery card and not an ice cream card, but uh, who knows. But uh, I did miss out on that. Uh, that may be one that I may be able to pick up this year. I don't know. Roosts are getting out of sight. Uh, but I'd like to get one in a, in a low-grade condition, and we'll see. Number four of my misses was 1954 Stallmeyer Willie Mays. Uh, just Stallmeyer, what do you say? Uh, just a, a fantastic, rare uh, uh, set from Stallmeyer Hot, Hot Dogs, sold uh, in the packaging as a stiffener between hot dogs as well as at the ballpark. Uh, I have the they were 53, 54, 55. I have all three mantles. Here is my 1954 mantle. 54 is, I think, the hardest to get year. And this in a three is a stud card for a mantle. It's possibly one of the most valuable cards in my collection, or it's top 10 for sure. Uh, but I really wanted to get the maze. Um, Rick, vintage uh, oddball card. It's got a maze uh, this year, I believe. And uh, I really think I missed out on this one, but uh, we'll see what happens uh, this coming year. We'll see if another one comes up. They don't come up very often. My number three missed out was this 1910 W. Unk uh, Wagner card. That was in Huggins as Scott as well. Um, it's the same, essentially the same card as the 1910 Tip Top that celebrated the uh, World Series champions Tigers. Uh, but uh, but the W Unk one is called a strip card, but I, it may actually these may have actually been uh, cut off of, of notebook covers. I do have the Cobb uh, that I really need to get reholdered. I'm not a reholder guy. I don't, I don't believe in that. I think that's a huge scam and a money grab by the, the grading companies. But this SGC, uh, some of SGC's older. Uh, holders. I, I really don't like the looks of them so much. So I'd like to get this one uh, reholdered. I, I would never think about getting a PSA holder uh, reholdered. But anyway, the, the 1910 W. Unk uh, Wagner, I would love to get that to go along with the uh, Cobb. But I missed out. And it, it because the tip top bread uh, Wagner shot up incredibly in value, this one followed and was just uh, too much for me. What is next? Next, I don't know if you guys saw this one. If you're a Clemente collector, <laughs> I went for this one, and I, I actually should have probably just won it. I backed out because other auctions came up, and there were some other things I saw. But it's a 1967 top stand-up uh, Clemente. Top stand-up is probably the holy grail of Clemente cards. They are freaking rare, and this was in Heritage just, what, last month? Uh, this one was does not have the perforation around the head, so it's a proof, it's just the, the card. And I think it's the only known copy. Uh, and the, the ones that are perforated, they were never released, they were tissue issues, maybe they were released, but there's just a couple. Uh, so this one being a proof, uh, I really wanted to get it. I think this would have been a, fit really good in my collection. I'm a, I have a lot of Clementes, and I'm a, a test issue guy, but, uh, I just wasn't feeling it the night of the auction. Some other auctions opened up that had some premier card that I'd like to go for, and I can't get both, so I, I backed out on this one, and it went for less than I think that it's it's worth. But the 1967 top stand-up Clemente proof that has got to be the 
holy grail for any uh, Clemente collector. And my number one miss out uh, was the, this 1950s um, mascot dog field mantle, the BVG-1 that uh, was discovered. It was the only one known, uh, whenever that was, 2019 or so. One since then has come to auction. I know of a, a couple others that are ungraded, so maybe one will come about. But uh, I, I was serious, very serious about it, and I bid it and bid up high beyond where I was comfortable or where I should have been. So when that happens, uh, you know, I came to my senses and I said, I gotta, I gotta let this go. You can't. It's just the way it is. You can't add everything you want. That's for sure. So. I hope to see it again. I've held it once, uh, the 1950s, circa 1950s mascot dog food uh, mantle came and gone. Uh, I was surprised it, 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 it resurfaced so soon after its initial offering, but missed out on it. So 2024, um, these are once but not targets. These are not cards that I, um, only cards I, I want, but these are cards that uh, have been on my list for some time, and so they will, and I may not get any of these. Um, I may get one or more, we'll see. We'll just see what happens. But number five on my 2024 want list is a 1965 Tomps uh, Joe Namath. I would say that I probably won't get this card because they come around often they're expensive. I would probably want one in a centered five or six, I would think, is where I would want to be on it. Those, that's an expensive card. They come up a lot. And when it comes time to bidding and laying down some cash, I just don't feel it. I, it, I want the card. I think it's an important card. I saw Namath play very early, you know, or in the beginning of his career. I mean, I was you know, born in 62, so I watched him play in the late 60s. And he was the... the he was the original Joe Cool. You think Joe Burrow is Joe Cool? Wrong O. Namath was cool. He was wearing the fur coats back in the late 60s, you know, 50 years before Burrow was, and the sunglasses and the commercials, and just a stud. Just a stud. I think everybody should, you know, it's just a must have card, but I don't get really, really excited about it because you see it a lot. Um, but maybe I'll pick that up. That's number five on my 2024 want list. Uh, number four, oh, a 1952 Topps Jackie. Um, I don't have one, never have owned one, and it's just a beautiful card. It's not my favorite Jack. I mean, I have a lot of Jackies, um, the earlier ones, um, but the 52 Topps is just beautiful with that just deep red, big smile. It's a gorgeous card. I would be looking for that to something similar to my 52 Tops mantle, or not mantle, my uh, maze. Uh, at low grade, uh, not too low, but you know, three, four centered. Uh, and being that I'd pay five, six off center type prices, I'd want it centered, low grade, because centered, higher grade is just too expensive. So something like this, uh, my uh, 52 Tops maze that is just a phenomenal card. So the 1952 Topps uh, uh, Jackie Robinson. I hopefully I can pick one of those up this year. They certainly come to market quite often. Uh, centering's uh, difficult. Then when you get a, a mid to low grade centered, it becomes you know uh, less often seen. Number three, I don't know. It's it's the 1910 Orange Borders Honus Wagner. There's two. Uh, po he has two poses in this Orange Butter uh, Border set. These are again on Box of Candy. Uh, so uh, you just don't you don't see him. I think there may have been one this year that I saw, but it was in really terrible condition. I finally I don't want I'll never own a card that's in terrible shape just to say I own the card. Never. I'd rather just not own one. I don't mind low grades as long as they they look good, but. Uh, I have the Cobb, which is less than 10, I think, of those, and the Matthewson, which I have the highest graded one, which is just a couple of those. And those are big time cards in my collection. Uh, and I'd really like to add a Wagner, and I'm always looking for that. Uh, that unfortunately, Wagner's going up in price, so I can't imagine what his orange border would be, but I'm looking. 
Number two on my 2024 want list. So I'm, it's on my list every year, whether or not I make a video. It's the 1949 Leaf Satchel Page. Um, there was several, you know, they, they come to auction relatively regularly and they go for huge prices uh, and value, especially in mid to upper grade. I would be looking for something in a uh, low grade, um, one to two to three. Uh, that I, I really want the registration on it. Centerings would be great, but it's got to have at least a reasonable registration. You guys know the registration on those 49 leaves can be horrific. And especially with that page card, it just becomes this looking through an aquarium. It's very unpalatable to me. So I, I do not even want one if it's poorly registered. I can certainly deal with uh, centering problems or back damage or writing on the back. I don't care. I'd like one nicely registered that presents pretty well in a very low grade. So that's my number two, and we're going to wrap it up. That's my, oh, again, I think this was on my list last year. Uh, I don't think I did a video, but I think I mentioned it, and it's the 1910 E98 uh, Christy Mathewson. Um, I, ha I want to get the color run. There's four colors. There's red, orange, uh, light blue, and light green. Um, I have the uh, more difficult ones, I believe, the light blue and the light green, and I need the red and the orange. Um, so much harder than the Cobbs, so much harder than the, than the Wagners. There was in the Black Swamp find where there was, there's probably seven to a thousand, 700 to a thousand cards in that find, and they were all in this stupid, great condition, but most of them are red, and there was only one Matthewson in that whole find. So Matthewson's very difficult and very valuable. Uh, so I'm looking for the red or the orange. The reason it, I want the color run, I want the color run like I have the color run of the Cobbs that I'll show here. Um, it just super cool. I finished that color run, uh, I don't know, some six, five, six, seven years ago. I don't know. And I've been working on the Maddie, uh, but I have, uh, it's two years now since, uh, at least since I got my last E98, uh, Matthewson. Uh, and so I'm looking for an orange or a red and they come up. I want low grade with good eye appeal. Um, but in that, the ones that have come up are just really poor. Uh, the creases don't look great uh, on these cards, in my, in my opinion, on the E98s, especially the red ones. So I don't want one that's too doggy. I want one that looks good. I don't care if it's a one or a two or three, uh, as long as it, uh, it's got uh, a nice surface on it. So um, hey. that's it. 2023, uh, some of my highlights of my pickups, a um, few misses, and my uh, some goals for 2024. I hope to get some good stuff. It's a big year for me. I'm moving down to Florida here in a couple months, so that's going to take out of the budget, I think, significantly. But we'll see how it goes. Happy New Year to everybody.